So my, my name is Yong Kang He. Very happy to be here to talk about how to automate EKS cluster creation and the protection. I basically, almost about one year ago, when I joined the company Carsten, I started to run the demo to show customers how to protect the containers, how to you know restore the containers, how to run the disaster recovery, how to support the portability migration from one region to the other region, or could be from other cloud, from on-premises, come to AWS EKS. Is that what? There is a display box that's blocking the screen. Ah. Okay, yes, okay. Oh, it's okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what's happening. Uh, let, let me try again. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, can we exit from it? It's going to do all the screen. That's right. Is that OK now? No. It's OK, right? All right, let's, let's continue. So the idea is so when I joined last year, I realized that there is a very good you know, opportunity. I need uh, automation to create the EKS cluster to demonstrate to the customer. I don't have to keep a 24 by 7. Basically, in the initial two weeks, I keep running the EKS cluster in order for me to demonstrate to the customers. And then I realized I actually I only use one hour or two hours every day. So I created the automation. So every time before the customer demo, I just run the automation, one command. I will spin up the environment. In about 20 minutes, it will be up running. And then after the customer demo, I just turn off another command to destroy the whole environment. So very happy to be here. I can't wait to show you how it works. So I will go straight to the demo. The reason is it does take like a 20 minutes to build up the environment. So I log into the AWS Cloud Shell. So the single, single one command is run the deploy. But where to get the command, get the scripts, it is actually in my GitHub page. So I will show you shortly. If I come back to the slide deck here, you can see. So the magic command is dot slash deploy. It's based on the bash shell. And inside of the command, actually, there are two scripts. One is to create this EKS cluster. The second one is to enable the container backups. So totally, we are looking at you know, about 18, sometimes you know, 20 minutes. The whole environment is ready. By end of the scripts, you are expecting to see. Here is a link to access the web console. And you can immediately to see how to granularly recover the containers. It could be somebody deleted the configure maps, secrets, or service account. Whatever, any one of the spec artifacts that is missing, you can't recover. You can't provide the correct service. So you can immediately log into the console to show how the you know, advanced backup recovery options works for the EKS. Where to get the scripts? So it's publicly available from my GitHub page. So the bottom of the three, the command, basically it's a one-time job. Once you're done, it will be sitting there. So now, since we are already running the command, as you can see from the Cloud Shell, I use the Cloud Shell, so you don't have to think about it to use your own terminal. But technically, you can use your own terminal anyway. So right now, we're building the uh, I was using the EKS CTO command line to automate the whole environment. So right now it is still building. Uh, let me walk you through a little bit more details here. I guess everybody knows, you know, containers, there are a lot of advantages comparing to the virtual machine. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. But the DevOps actually somehow speed up the adoption of the containers literally everywhere. The, one of the big advantages is you literally just build once, you can run anywhere. Could be public cloud, private, or virtual machine, physical machine, etc. But the problem here is uh, when you initially only like, uh, you know, dozens of containers, you can, you can probably still manage them. But when you launch hundreds and thousands of containers, then becomes a problem. That's where there is a Kubernetes comes here, into play. So typically, when you have the Kubernetes cluster, you normally have the control plane nodes or master nodes, and then you have multiple worker nodes. But how to set up the cluster? That's a big challenge. 
I don't know how many people did the set up the Kubernetes cluster. Use the hard way. That means you install the Linux machine, you install all the packages, you create the control plane nodes, then add the work nodes. It takes ages, right? So that's why, according to the survey, CNCF survey, people just hate the you know, self-managed cluster. They want an easy way to deploy. That's where the managed Kubernetes becomes so popular. Amazon EKS is definitely the clear leader and followed by some other cloud providers. The main reason is the hand tuning your own cluster is so hard. I also did my own survey via my LinkedIn post. 51% choose Amazon EKS, definitely a clear leader. So how to create an EKS cluster? I also listed here, there are a lot of ways to create the EKS cluster. I only listed here a few. So you can create from Amazon Web, Con Web Console. You can use CloudFormation. You can use Terraform. You can use AWS CLI or EKS CLI, or could be COPS or literally dozens plus, you know, different tools you can create the cluster. But none of them can, like um, the automation I created, just run one command, does everything for you. Okay, so what I'm going to focus is uh, how I created the automation using EKS. Before I show you the automation, I want to show you, if you want to create a from a web console, what are the steps you're going to, you need to, to do? So first of all, you need to create an Amazon EKS cluster rule. Use the, the policy listed here. And then you need to create an EKS node IAM rules, three different policies. And once you have the rules available, you can create a control plane node first, followed by create the you know, node group. It does take some time. If you, especially, if I'm a developer, I just need a you know, Kubernetes cluster. I just need to run my you know, application. That is very challenging to them, how to create the IAM rule, how to create, use the policy, etc. So that's why I created the automation here. So basically, you just run EKS-deploy. You just need an EKS cluster ready to go. So uh, EKS-deploy, we will create the EKS cluster. The code, same area. It's from my GitHub page here. Did, did anyone think about you know, the Kubernetes containers? You still need a backup. So Amazon or other cloud have the same model, shared responsibility model. The data is customer's responsibility. So it's customer's responsibility to protect them, to make sure it's safe. So how to enable the container backups? So by the way, AWS backup does not cover EKS cluster does not have the visibility to in, into the Kubernetes containers. So typically when you want to enable the container backups, so here are the other steps. First of all, you need to retrieve the EKS cube config file, being able to access the cluster. And once you get the access, you, you can you know, verify if my cluster is up running, and then you can install the backup tool. There are a lot of different backup tools, even free open source tool. There is also commercial you know, tools available. And once you install the tool, you basically, typically you need to create you know, a backup location target. So since you're running from Amazon, you know, most likely you choose Amazon S3, but it can be any other S3 compatible as well. And once you have this ready, you can create a backup policy based on your settings, so how often you want to do the backup, or how often, uh, where are you going to send the backup to? And you can you know, schedule the backup jobs automatically, or you can run uh, on-demand backup jobs. But these steps also you know, pretty, it's not uh, that straightforward. That's why I created the automation for the container production. To, to enable the container backup, three minutes, three minutes to enable the container backups. You just run k10-deploy. So I created the automation based on the cast in K10. That's the number one Kubernetes backup DR application mobility tool. And where to get the scripts, the same, same you know, place, GitHub you know, repository, you can get all the scripts. But shortly, I can log into the GitHub page to show you. But just to summarize, my automation created those three different functions. So you just need an EKS cluster. That's the first column, EKS-deploy. The middle, 
I already have an EKS cluster, but I don't have the container backups yet. That's very important, especially when you are running in the production environment. You definitely need the backup, a specialized tool for your container backups. So the ktn-deploy, we will enable the container backup. It does all of the jobs here. Install the tool, deploy. I also deploy a sample database. So the, the backup tool does not require Cassandra. So the Cassandra is just deploy a sample database to show you how you can granularly recover the you know, database applications. And then create the Amazon S3, create a backup policy, kick off on demand backup jobs. So the last column is uh, I don't have anything. I just want to spin up an environment to try all different uh, you know, use cases. So that's the deploy. So basically, that's uh, you know, automation of the number one and number two together. So once I finish all of the testing, you can basically use the three different tools to dis destroy the whole environment, to clean up the environment. So eks-destroy and then ktn-destroy plus you know, dot slash destroy. That basically clean up everything. So any question? Um, yeah? Yeah, I can show you the scripts now. So right now we are still building the environment. That means you know it doesn't pass you know twenty minutes yet. So let me open the different tab. Say if I go to my GitHub page. Uh, uh, whether this backup included all the snapshots also, volume snapshots. Yeah, it does. Uh, actually, let me talk about it. So typically, when you are running your applications, your containerized application running, say from. A, uh, from our Amazon EKS, let's say I got a Cassandra database running here, and you have all different. Uh, you typically running in a separate namespace. You have your all your different uh, Kubernetes objects, uh, your configurations, and plus your persistent volume claims. So when we are going to do the snapshot, we basically we will take snapshot of your application components, of your Kubernetes configurations, and your persistent volume claims snapshot. So make sure when we do the snapshot, we capture everything. When you're going to recover, we give you the options to recover the whole namespace, the whole application. So it can be full restore in place. Or you might just want to clone to a different namespace. Or somebody, I mentioned earlier, somebody accidentally deleted some of the configurations. It will cause problems. We give you the visibility. You just take the objects to the recovery. Yeah? OK. So I create the automation, um, you know, AWS EKS. That's the one. If I click this link here, so you can see all of, all of the scripts are listed here. And I also, if I jump to directly to the readme here, uh, here, oh, not showing. Sorry, let me make the mirror. Uh, yeah, this should be okay. Let's see. Sorry for that. Let me go, go back here. So this is my GitHub page. Yep. OK. What about now? Oh, serious? <laughs> because my laptop is actually pretty old. OK. Is that, is that good now? OK, so I created the automation here. So EKS-K10, that's the one for Amazon EKS. How to automate the EKS across the creation and uh, you know, protection. So if I go direct to the readme section here, so this is the one I use you know, Cloud Shield. It makes my life easier. But you can use your own terminal as long as you have your AWS command line tool installed, your EKS CTO these tool installed, that will be easier. You clone the repository. What we did earlier is we, we did the deploy command. So that's where we create the EKS cluster first, followed by enable the container backups. Any other question here? I also have some other YouTube videos to walk you through. If you just like to create it from a UI, I've got a video to show you how to create the EKS cluster from a UI and how to enable container backups three minutes. OK, and uh, if you guys are interested to see what's inside of the scripts that deploy, basically pretty simple. You create an EKS cluster, and then you enable container backups. I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, 
let's suppose that I want to spin up this EKS cluster in a specific CIDR range, in a specific uh, VPC range, so where I can make those kind of customizations? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, that's part of the EKS deploy. When you spin up the EKS cluster, uh, so for now, you can see the EKS deploy. So basically, what, what I did is EKS created the cluster. That's the command to create the EKS cluster. You can customize it from here. Okay. Yeah. And you can also... And for the security group and all, we can customize it. I'm pretty sure you can customize. It's the feature provided by the EKS CTL. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Not a problem. Any other question? Otherwise, let's see if it's uh, well, still running. <laughs> let's wait you know, a few more seconds. Well, I have a question. Um, yep. Uh, how does, uh, which is the fastest cloud provided to spin up Kubernetes cluster? Mm -hmm. Have you tried Google? I actually, my automation does, you know, does a lot of more, more than AWS. I did cover all six public cloud. So which one is the fastest? Which one is the fast? If I'm only sleeping with you, definitely, you know, Google is the fast. <laughs> I'm serious, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, you know, when customers, when customers look into the you know, Kubernetes cluster, it's more than just the Kubernetes custer. But but depends you know it depends on what, when you are talking about if you think about the overall solution nobody can you know can compete with you know AWS so in terms of the um, the depth of the product services. Them, you just want to spin up something and try it out. So you if you just want to try it out, yeah, I personally also try Google pretty much you know a lot seriously because you know I only need like a six minutes I can spin up a EK you know so GK minutes, cluster. Six yeah. minutes for Google and then twenty minutes. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you can think about it the other way. Probably there are some advanced features, right? <laughs> anyway. Okay, uh, let's see if it's still running or... Yeah, it's almost there. Actually, the EKS cluster has been created. Now we are installing the backup tool, but not showing. Sorry, let me make it a mirror. What about now? Yeah, it's good. So basically, if I scroll back, you can see the EKS cluster has been created exactly 15 minutes. And then follow my uh, backup enablement. Enable the container backups, it, it does take like a, about a two to three minutes. Yeah, so it's almost, it's almost done. But do you guys want to try? If anyone wants to try, actually you can try use your own AWS account, but it will charge you, obviously. <laughs> but if you don't want to try use your own AWS account, you know, I got something, you know, I can, uh, actually, let me show you here. So you can join the you know, Kubernetes Singapore meetup group. So basically, I'm the organizer. I organize the meeting for tomorrow at the AWS office as well, but not this office. Unfortunately, we could not book this office. So we booked in one George Street. So it's a full version, a full hands-on version. AWS will provide the access. So you don't have to, to be charged by, by you know, AWS for your uh, testing. So feel free to join us. I'm actually got a very you know easy domain name. So K A S U G user group. So if you click uh, you know type of this link, you can find it, you can join the group. And the meeting you can also join us because we only we booked a very uh, it's not a big uh, room. We only can fit uh, like uh, 60 people. So we will also have the remote uh, you know teams meeting available. Anyone want to join us? Feel free to join us. So some of the reference links. So I also created, you know, a lot of the YouTube video talk about Kubernetes. That's one of my favorites. And I also have the container backup on EKS uh, light bulb video. That's the one I, you know, created with uh, my AWS friends. So we work together for this video. And the automation code I already shared earlier. 
and uh, some of the documentation. If you're interested to know about the cars, then this is our you know, official page. Our last page, if you want to learn more, I created a lot of different videos and also some of the workshop, a two hours workshop. I have the lab guide to show you step by step how to create the EKS cluster, how to do the recovery of the individual namespace, of the individual objects, etc. So by now, the environment should be ready. Let's see. Yeah. Actually, it is pretty good this time, you know, seven and a half minutes. So the whole environment is ready. Oh, actually, let me. Can you guys see? You guys can't see. Sorry for that. So now you guys should be able to see. So by end of the scripts, you can see total time of 17 and, uh, you know, 17 and a half minutes. And it's for the enable of the backup, you only need a two and a half minutes. So by end of the scripts, you can see this is my URL to access the web console. Once I log into the web console, I'm not going to show you how to recover the container, but just to show you the UI. So I copy paste here and press enter. And you will be asked to provide the token code to access the web console. So come back to the cloud shell. This is my token code. So I paste my token code here. So click sign. So first time to log in, you will be asked to provide your email address, your company name, and then click accept the terms. So did you guys see? So in about you know less than 20 minutes, I got an EKS cluster running. I got a Cassandra database deployed. I got my backup jobs already running. And I can immediately to show you how to recover the containers. Actually, my backup jobs already finished. So that's the question uh, yes, someone asked earlier. What we backed up here? We do the application components backup. We do the Kubernetes configuration backup and also your workload. In this case, that's Cassandra. Could be any other you know, applications. So right now, we're doing, we finished the snapshot. But the snapshot is still sitting in the same cluster, same data center. What if somebody deleted the whole namespace, or maybe the whole data center is gone? You lost the recover capabilities. So we, that's why we always recommend to send another copy to external Amazon S3. That will be a lot safe and cheaper, reliable. You can keep it longer for you know, little cost. So the second job actually copy the snapshot to the Amazon S3. Actually, there is a lot of other you know, cool features. Once the data sitting from the Amazon S3, let, let's say I give you an example. Customer initially running the EKS cluster from a Singapore region. Now Jakarta region is available. They want to move back to Jakarta. I can easily import the data from the Amazon S3 and then recover the containers from a Jakarta region. So that's to support the portability or application mobility functions. So right now, while we are talking here, we, the backup is already completed. You can immediately to see how the recover works. So I, I might just show you, you know, how recover works. So the main thing here is, uh, so most of the people might ask, you know, since I'm running from a EKS, uh, uh, behind the scene, I also I can do the EBS backup. Yes, you can do EBS backup, but can, do you see what's inside of the EBS you know, volume? You can't see. So here is a difference. If I click the restore points here, so you can select from any one of the restore points. The, restore points. the first one is from the primary storage. The second one actually already moved to Amazon S3. So you can choose from any one of the copy for the recovery. So if I want to recover anything, you just select the restore points. So here is a major thing. The main difference, we do see what's inside. You can see I got a PVC, I got a config maps, secrets, etc. So somebody deleted something here. You can just deselect all of these. I just want to recover the config maps or the secrets. That's very handy. Yeah. Okay. So you also got the option. You can choose to say, if you do a full restore in place, just click restore. We we'll restore everything back to the original namespace. But if you want to restore to a new namespace, you just give a name and click restore. We we'll restore everything to a new namespace. This is also very important. 
My production system is running okay, but it's very slow. You want to troubleshooting. You don't want to play from your production system. So we allow you to restore from the backup to a different namespace. You do the troubleshooting investigation from there. I think that's pretty much all from my side. So is there any other questions? I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. It's a, a bit different questions, but then again, it will lead to our part. Mm -hmm. So I believe your repository is publicly available. It is. Uh, so let's suppose that in real life scenarios, we are going for a production's deployment. Yep. How we can convince to the client that we are downloading this repository, we are, uh, uh, we are uh, just creating your environment with some trustable resources for how mm. we can convince them to like, uh, like in terms of security and all, like these code has been scanned by some tools or something, how yep. we can convince them? If you want to make it secure, yeah, definitely you can use the IAM rules, you can have the Active Directory integration or any LDAP integration as well. So it, it is configurable. I mean, generally in uh, real life scenarios, so we are not allowed to download publicly something. Ah, okay. The, the, register, the images. Yeah, typically in the isolated environment, especially like a financial industry, they, they, that's what we call air gap yeah, installation. So like yes, to yeah. Say, uh, it, it is pretty easy. Basically, you just docker pull all the images, push to your private registry, and then we do the installation from your private registry. Yeah, images, uh, yeah, images we can go like for CIS based. Uh, CIS based standard, we can uh, uh, do the hygiene according to. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, that, that was my main question because if we download simply from your repository, how we can convince them to the client that it is, we are downloading this infrastructure that they bought from some trustable resources? Yeah. But technically, you don't have to you know, use my you know, automation to do the installation. How simple it is to enable the container backup is just one command, one Helm install will deploy it to your EKS cluster. Or you can deploy it from Amazon you know, Marketplace, AWS Marketplace. One click, you can deploy. Yeah, that will be a lot easier. That will solve your problem, your concern. You don't want to use someone else, you know, a repository, right? I don't know, do we have time for any other questions? Uh, While we are setting up the environments? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Just one last question, make it quick. Oh, sorry, what's the question? That is actually that is actually a very common question that I get asked very often. So I, I tell you what, in the traditional way, uh, earlier days. When there is no tool like a casting or any other, you know, advanced tool to have the applications, you know, granularity, there's an, the only way backup is via the ETCD. But the ETCD backup problem is uh, you're not able to do the backup like every five minutes, every 10 minutes. You will be in trouble if you do every five minutes do the backup. But the granular backup, you can buy your application, you can make it every five minutes, every 10 minutes. And you can spread all the backups across the, the whole, you know, the 24 hours. You don't have to, like the traditional ETCD backup, you might do every day, do the backup. You might, you can, technically you can do every four hours or even every two hours. But when you are going to restore, you restore to two hours ago's data. A lot of stuff already overrided. So you can't get the latest restore points. That's why the you know application centric backup is more important, is more you know effective. But having said that, you know custom does allow you to backup the ETCD. But we just we don't recommend customer to do that way. It's we don't think it's a great way to protect the applications. But if I have some uh, like internal configuration. Some binding rules or some within the cluster, so those items are. The cluster scope of the resources are also backed up by us. 
Yeah, it's also taken care of by the custom backup. When you do the backup, you can also select the cluster scope of the resources you want to back them up, and we back them up. Okay, thanks. <laughs>